All right, how is everyone doing? Uh, I'm Rich Chalenza, and thanks for tuning in to the Rich Chalenza Show. WTF are you talking about? So what I want to get into today is kind of wacky. Uh, you're going to probably think I'm nuts. Um, but I'm going to tell you something that I've been doing over the years, my entire life actually, which which is something I think that is pretty incredible, that has always worked for me, and it's regarding how to heal yourself um, from injuries. And I know a lot of you people will be like, you're nuts, or I can't believe you're going to do a podcast on this type of subject, but I'm going to tell you right now, I can only tell you my life experiences of what I went through and how well it worked for me. Uh, I'm also going to be doing a podcast in the future on me very seldom ever getting sick. And uh, especially considering where I came from when as a child, I was always sick. And then as I got older, I got to the point where I truly never gotten sick. Um, But this one's going to be more about how to heal yourself um, again, I'm not here to, st- I'm not here to pitch all this crazy shit. Like what I am telling you can work for you. That's one thing I try to even explain in my YouTube videos or even my podcast or anytime I do any discussions for anyone is what works for me may not work for you, but I could tell you a lot of things that I did do that did definitely work for me and they may work for you, obviously. So to back up a little bit, um, when I was born, um, I was always sick. I was very sickly. My mother and father had the genetics of the God, which later in life I was very fortunate to get their genetics. But as a child, I really didn't have their genetics. My mother and our father, I'm sorry, very strong, powerful people. Um, they, they were very hip, stylized, tall, have unbelievable genetics, both of them great legs, shoulders, very strong will, and physically very strong. But I was always small, very small. But let me back up to when I was a child, I pulled... Um, hot curling uh, rollers, water uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, there were rollers and then they would steam hot water underneath them and the woman would use the curler to roll her hair to steam it I guess, or to keep the curl. And I pulled uh, a large amount of hot water on my stomach and it burnt my entire stomach. I had a huge scar growing up. Um, still have a scar. I could care less. But according to my mom and dad, I didn't cry, which sounds kind of crazy. That is kind of weird to me as well. Um, Except when the ambulance came, I guess I got scared with all the lights. But I didn't cry through the situation, which I ended up with third degree burns. And uh, if you kind of fast forward a little bit, as I was getting older, I just started to get more and more sick. I had a lot of problems with my teeth Um, at that time. I don't know why. They were just deteriorating. Also, I was having a lot of problems with my ears. I had constant earaches. Uh, I had a lot of problems with my throat. It even, I think, prevented me from eating a lot. So I was very, very thin, which I became very, very small. And I ended up, uh, even when I went to kindergarten or as life even went on, I was always the smallest kid. I was like the runt. They used to call me uh, pee-pee arms or toothpick um, or what else did they call me? Uh, you know, runt, obviously. My father actually originally called me tiger because I was so... I guess with a a high chair, I ripped it off and threw it. I would crush cookies. I ripped the whole side of the crib off. I was always extremely strong, which I still kind of am, I guess, for my age and my size. But I was always sick and I did not feel good. Eventually, which led to uh, some surgeries. So as I was getting older, like I said, I kept having to have some mouth surgeries, teeth issues, and then... I went on to where I couldn't even breathe. They had to do an emergency uh, tonsil removal in the mid-70s, early 70s, which wasn't that common back then because my throat started to turn black. I couldn't even, I I was just closing in. And then after that, I got a hernia. I had to have operation on that because I was lifting suitcases or trying to lift too much weight or something. Who knows what I was doing? I was always doing sports, trying to excel. Um... And I just wrote this in my webinar, actually, for my Mastering Self-Confidence program regarding football. Even in Pop Warner, I played running back and middle linebacker because I would literally try to run through people. And then middle linebacker, I would just try to tackle. I was just insane. I would try to blow right through them physically, trying to tackling them. Did I say that correctly? Running through them with the ball? Yeah, I hope so. But I always felt sick growing up. I didn't feel healthy. And I was always playing sports. And then at a very young age, me and my buddies were boxing. I was always wrestling, playing football, uh, obviously basketball. I was playing all these different sports. I was even playing soccer, tennis. I played so many damn sports. I don't even know how to explain it to you. I think I was also burning off so many calories because I couldn't stand still. And again, physically, I was always the smallest, but I was the strongest. But I was always injuring myself too. 
And what I would do is when I would get injured, and I would get injured a lot, I think because I was smaller, even in football, is I would literally go home. And I think I started this when I was a child because, like I said, my my throat, I couldn't breathe. My ears would always be ringing. I would just lay there and internally, slowly but surely, trying to program myself to internally heal myself. Because I was definitely afraid of needles. I was definitely afraid of doctors. I was afraid of everything, actually, when I was younger, afraid of heights. And uh, even when my mother took me to the doctors as a young boy, I tried to escape and run out. I even did it in high school, which is kind of embarrassing. Uh, but I did. I wouldn't go to doctors. I even used to lie on my physicals for all my sports. I used to do fake signatures because I was so afraid of doctors. But me always feeling hor- horrible, I slowly but surely as I got older, just mentally started to heal myself. And how I did that was I literally would shut down. If I injured myself... So I'll give you a few more examples. So when I was younger, I was once running and as fast as I could to go play soccer. And there's a wire for this parking garage that had the th- uh, things hanging. And it caught my neck and slipped my neck. I flew, elevated, got slammed down. I was knocked out. I woke up. My throat was all bleeding. Had to run to my mother. They had emergency um, get my neck because it was bleeding. It wasn't to the point of death. Uh, after that, I was playing football with my friends. I hit somebody so hard. The problem is I hit him and my head bounced back because they were so much bigger. Um, somebody bit me in my head, which just kept internally, internal, uh, bleeding. I shouldn't say internally. It was bleeding. They had to rush me to the emergency room. I had to get a bunch of stitches in my head, which if you think about it, for someone to split their head open that wide for that much blood coming out. And my father... So anyways, uh, that was unbelievably... Both of those were very painful. I remember even getting... They were shooting shots into my head, and uh, I literally thought they were hitting my brain, which was crazy. They had to wrap up my head, and what I would do, slowly again, but surely, I'd go back to my house. I would lay down, and it would usually take me, I would just lay there. I wouldn't sleep. I would just lay there and mentally convince myself that I was healing and that I was already healed. And I know you hear this crazy shit all the time, but I think the trick with me is I just literally shut my body down and only just kept concentrating specifically on healing in the area that I'm damaged. So uh, if you fast forward, then my father got me a motorcycle. I once blew through, lost control, hit a fence. My whole face slammed into it. I hurt myself there pretty bad. Um, And then I got an XR75. I was using that motorcycle as well at a very young age. And I'm talking like, I might have been 10, 11, 12. The bike was huge. Went out, uh, hit the back brake, sliding. I hit the front brake, flipped over the handlebar, snapped my collarbone, and I didn't let anyone know, even though I couldn't lift my arm up for like a month or two, literally a couple months. And then I was playing football and again, ran into a tree on that same one. I think I snapped it again. It was in really bad shape. And again, what I would do is go after I damaged myself, I would just go lay down internally for a day to lay there and just keep thinking about how it's going to heal. And before you know it, I almost became a self-healing machine because I was always, like I said, boxing and fighting and wrestling and playing sports and especially when I boxed with my buddies and we're always getting in fights I used to fight my uncles who were brutal uh some of the strongest guys I know to this day they're going on 60 years old my uncle still hits a punching bag I think 250 300 times around 10 rounds his brother my uncle Jimmy that's my uncle Louie my uncle Mike my uncle Jimmy punched so hard I used to box with him and fight with him my whole life he once hit me so hard that I felt my bones shatter no, my bones shatter. I felt my bones move. Sorry, that was kind of funny. I felt literally my internal bones like just move in my body. I can't even explain it. It was brutal. And growing up with uncles and a lot of Italian um, family members that were very tough and catching a lot of beatings and being in so many fights over and over again, uh, I just think I had a small man's disease complex, always trying to prove myself. And believe me, I caught more beatings in my life, I think, than I've ever given because I was always trying to fight either bigger, tougher, stronger people. And I always said, what makes you tougher isn't the beatings you give, it's the ones you receive. I think Rocky or Sylvester Sloan said that as well in a movie, Rocky, maybe five or six or whatever the fuck that is. But it's not, again, about the beatings. Anybody could give somebody a beating, um, but can you accept that beating and still fight through it? And I remember in high school once, I got in a real bad jam with some guys from Elmhurst College, at a 7-Eleven, there was a bunch of jagoffs there I didn't like. And in high school, I was always still one of the strongest guys, but the smallest. I was probably only 135 pounds, but I was one of the top wrestlers. I still box with my buddy constantly, who actually owns one, the top gym in Chicago right now. 
uh, Jimmy Mango, my oldest and closest friend. And um, I was always fighting with my uncles. I was, we were boxing. I was wrestling all the time, lifting weights all the time. So I ended up in a jam with these guys. We got in an argument. I got my car. They chased me down. Two cars, eight people, which is, sounds ridiculous, and it was, and me and my buddy. They boxed us in. We got out of the car of the fight. They held my buddy down and like, I don't know, five or six of them teed off on me. And I remember the big one because he was like 6'4", came in. And I'm not saying this because I think I'm tough by any means. He came in and like literally ran up and punched me right in the face. But what he didn't realize is one is I've been punched in the face so many times in my life. I was numb to it. Even my nose, I've been hit so many times. It kind of like smashes in. And I've kind of convinced myself that I don't bleed in my, my nose anymore. And I swear to you, I don't bleed. It's very interesting because I, progr- I don't know if I program my mind or maybe it's just so built up in there. He punched me and I just stood there and he went ballistic. So then somebody else, I think, punched me in the side of the head. They were grabbing me and some of the guys were actually feeling bad for me. Like, dude, just go down. And the other guy's trying to, the bigger guy's trying to, pun- I'm trying to punch him. He's trying to punch me and I'm getting punched in all these different angles, kicked in the back. You know, when you're getting jumped by a bunch of jagoffs. But one of the guys kept saying, just go down. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, first of all, you can't knock me down. Number two is you think I'm going to go down so you could stomp on my, like, are you out of your fucking mind? But to make a long story short, the, I wouldn't go down. They even lifted me and slammed me on the car. I rolled out of it. They got tired. We all just got in a jam. And then literally I got in the car and drove away with my buddy. And you would have thought I would have had to go to the emergency room. Now, I knew my face was kind of bashed up. I dropped off my buddy. I remember I was shaking a little in my hands, but I calmed down when I went home. I was fine. I walked in, didn't even tell my mother. I woke up and I had two black and blue eyes, like very big. But when I went to bed that night, I knew I was damaged. And I, I, I refused to go to the emergency room and I refused to tell anybody when I was hurt. I laid in the bed and I just calmed everything down and said, you are going to heal yourself. This is just in what happens a lot of times. I don't know if you've been in a lot of fights or a lot of things where you go numb. But then when that numbness comes down, you are very sore, right? So what I convinced myself is being sore a lot of times because I've been working out weights my whole life is actually a good thing instead of a bad, another cork I have. But I, every time I work out, when I was younger especially, I'd get very sore because I'd lift weights so heavy. So even if I was sore the next day from fighting or whatever, I looked at it as a benefit, not a disbenefit. I knew I'd be sore, but I woke up. My mother looked at me panicked because I had the two black and blue eyes. Uh, my head was banged up a little bit. And that was like on a Friday, I think, and it's Saturday. My buddies came, uh, a couple other of my friends, my closest friends, actually Jimmy and my other buddy Nino, they came to visit me. They heard about the big fight, me getting you know, beat up and by all these guys. They wanted to retaliate and get all nuts, which was cool. I dig it. But I was just kind of like healing and they were kind of mad at me that I got I put myself in that, my, that position to get my ass kicked I was mouthing off there were too many guys and we just knew these guys were assholes they were older than us they were a lot bigger than us but I really wanted to I didn't care I really wanted to fight them and what was interesting later in life I used to lift weights to try to get bigger and bigger which I ended up getting very big and I would literally try to hunt these guys down I couldn't find them but one of the things that drove me to get as big and as strong as I was, was that night, which is kind of, you take something bad and I kind of flipped it and made it good because everybody who gave me a beating, I looked at it as I'm going to come back and retaliate, which some I did, some I couldn't find, but that gave me drive to become what I became, I think, is a lot of the defeats. I could care less about the wins. I remember that in wrestling. I could almost go undefeated for long, long periods of time, months and months and months and months. But if you beat me, that was the one that's kind of burned in my head. So if you take Saturday and then Sunday came around, literally my black and blue eyes just started to fade away because I would just lay there and kept thinking to myself, I am already healed and this is going away quickly. By the time I went into school Monday, everybody heard about it and they thought I was demolished. I walked in, almost my black and blue eyes were gone. My head swelled, everything was gone and nothing except my hands from my knuckles from punching them. I just looked very normal. So a lot of guys that live near these guys in Elmhurst, and um, those areas came because they knew this th- that group and said, "We, oh my God, Rich, we heard they did this to you and that. They look, and, and they couldn't believe, I was just walking around. They thought I went to the emergency room. You hear all these rumors. I said, I'm fine. And I don't say that to be tough, but starting at that point, I really knew I had some goofy thing going as far as knowing how to heal myself more and more and more. And then if you fast forward a few years, um, I snapped my rotator's cuff playing football in Florida. 
and I, at this point, I couldn't, I was trying to heal myself, but my arm kept coming in and out of joint where it was like, just dropped me to my knees. So this time I had to go to the emergency room and I guess I got so large, I was on like, I don't know, 240, 250, whatever it was. My joints, I'm a small jointed guy, but I got so big, I guess my joints were pulling away from my tendon, uh, just everything, my sockets. So um, to make a long story short, they had to wrap me up. <clears throat> and I said, okay, wrap me up. So I couldn't move my left arm for a long period of time. And then I had to go see specialists. And they said, um, you know, we don't know if we're going to have to do surgery, this or that. And I said, well, give me some time. Can I try to internally heal myself? And they're like, well, you, know, you could do whatever you want to do. Two things I did, though. I said, listen, I'll take as much time as you need. Let's try to, like, let me try to heal this. And the other thing is, I'm not going to stop working out. And they says, well, you can't work out. I said, no, I'm going to work out continuously just on that, on the right side of my body because my left side was the rotator cuff tear. And I'll never stop doing legs, which included also swimming, doing all these different types of exercise to keep the movement going. And I did that for a couple months and they were shocked at my results. I ended up not getting surgery. A few years later, I did get two cortisone shots, but to this day, I never had surgery, even though it was in really, really bad shape. That rotator cuff was also near my uh, collarbone that I snapped twice. But I internally, again, not only kept saying every night I'm healing myself, I never stopped working out. So even when I benched, I'd go in for bench day. Normally, I couldn't bench on my left side, so I would just do dumbbells with my right side, right? I would do everything, cable crossover, one-sided, curl one-sided, left. What I would do on the other side is just kind of do um, just light movements, like almost pretending like there was weight in my hand, I guess you could say. And then they taught me all these different movements with my shoulder, which was amazing. Um, I took my time and it healed. Now, that was one of the last times I really, as far as something big, happened except a few years ago I was living in Carlsbad California and I went with my cousin biking like an asshole through the mountains that mountain biking stuff and there was a big ramp there and I don't know if you've ever been to Carlsbad it's beautiful um, I don't know if we were in Encinitas I don't know where they do these hot air balloons in San Diego and that's the area we were in so my cousin said to me Rich why don't you jump the ramp and I'll videotape you and I said yeah like a screwball I go to the top of the hill I come down hit the ramp way faster than I ever thought I would Flipped again over the handlebars, and I'm probably at this point 45 years old. Flip over, come down, and I hear crunch, crunch, crunch. I knew I snapped something. I really didn't know if I snapped my shoulder again. It was on that side uh, or my neck. I'm like, I didn't know if I was going to be paralyzed. Very similar to when I flipped over the handlebars of the motorcycle. Thank God I didn't snap my neck. I'd be paralyzed. In this case, same situation. I landed. I remember looking up. I knew the wind was entirely knocked out of me. And when the wind gets knocked out of me, I never panic. I kind of just start breathing slowly. And I either kind of try to learn to elevate myself or I'm going to heaven and die. <laughs> like I'm like, there's nothing I can do. Relax. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe it's from swimming so much. But I just relax when the wind's knocked out of me. And then eventually, hopefully it comes back. If it doesn't, I really say I'm going to die. But I try to just relax and float. And I was doing that. I finally got my breath back and I look up and my cousin's there and he's already there talking. I'm like, wow, that was fast. He's like, are you all right? And I'm like, yeah, let me catch my breath and then we'll get the hell out of here. I was, he's like, I got it on video. We were laughing. Or he's like making me laugh. He's like, I got it, Louis. You know, he called me Louis as a nickname. He's like, you got it. You flipped over. The it was, it's unbelievable. I said, oh, okay, awesome. You know, we're like, I'm smiling. I'm like, just give me a few more minutes. And uh, just give me a few minutes. I'll be up. Just let me rest for one second. Let me kind of do my internal heal thing. And then he took off and then he came back and I'm like, he's like, all right, are you ready to go? I'm like, yeah, I just said, give me a few minutes. He's like, it's been 45 minutes. So I don't know what happened in between there that if I just, my mind shut down and I was internally healing myself, but I, when I went to get up, I could barely lift myself up. He goes, listen, I think I have to take you to the emergency room. And again, I was very short of breath still when I went to sit up and I couldn't like I got up, but I couldn't stand straight up, which is kind of scary because I'm like, what's going on here? What did I snap? And he said, listen, I'm gonna, I, we got to get you out of here. Don't worry about the bike. They said, I said, no, 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 I'm going to push the bike. Let's get him back to the car. He's like, no, we got to the hospital. Should I call an ambulance? I don't know. I says, no, cool out, cool out. So we took the bikes to the car, but I was all the way hunched over. Like I was looking down at my feet 
he was getting very nervous. He goes, will you at least let me take you to my chiropractor? Literally, he's right up the street. Let me just rush you in there for an emergency. And I said, all right. He's like, I'll take you right in. So I'm leaned over. They rushed me in. And the chiropractor's like, what happened? And he explained it to him. And he says, oh my goodness, uh, let me look. He's looking. He goes, you broke at least two or three ribs. Even if you go to doctors, there's not that much they could do. We can wrap you up, but let me put these things on your back. Let's do some stuff. And he did that. And he says, I said, let me get out of here. If there's not much more you can do, I just want to go lay down and I can like do this thing where I heal myself and this. And he's looking at me like I'm a fucking lunatic, literally. Like he's like, are you serious? Like he's looking at me like I'm crazy. And he was from Chicago. He's about 10 years younger than me. I said, yeah, I do this thing where I like, I heal myself eternally. He's like, you're crazy. So he's like, would you do me a favor? Will you come back Monday? I just, or Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember. It might've been Tuesday. I don't think it was Monday. And I said, sure. I go to my cousin's house. I lay down. And I shut down that night. I don't move. I just lay there. I just keep thinking I'm internally being healed. I'm internally being healed. The next day comes around. I lay there. I went to get up. Still couldn't sit all the way up. But I just kept relaxing, relaxing. And then I, I got up a little bit. And I was able to stand up a little bit straighter up. And I got in the car. Or actually, did I walk? Because we, we lived right near our 24-hour fitness. Anyways, I lifted. I'm not sure if I could sit in the car yet. I might have just walked with my head down because it was only a couple blocks away. I wanted to get some movement. I went to the gym like a screwball. And this day, I just went into the jacuzzi. I went into the pool. And I went into the sauna and just chilled for long periods of time. That's all I remember. Got back. Again, lay down that entire night. Then the next day, I went in and did some workout. I know that sounds crazy. I did some legs. I was doing some stretching. And I was still very short of breath. Wasn't still all the way upright. So Monday, then I just went in like a regular kind of workout. I wasn't laying on my back. I would have I would have killed. I, nothing like that as far as a workout. Just kind of um, curling on my right side. Because I think the left side is where I broke my ribs. And just doing, again, some leg stuff. Again, getting in the pool. I love the buoyancy, which I'm going to be talking about in two other podcasts regarding swimming. But I started to get the blood flow. And then I felt, by the time Monday came around and Tuesday, I remember walking in his office upright. I literally just walked in. And he didn't recognize me. And he's like, can I help you? Because last time I think I had my head down the whole time, literally. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wasn't with my cousin this time because that's his. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, Rich. I said, yeah. He's like, oh my God, I didn't, um, I didn't know you were this bit, you know, from weightlifting and stuff. I only saw you hunched over because I literally went in a chair hunched over. He was putting some stuff on my back and he wrapped me up and I took off. I really never even really had good eye to eye contact with him. My cousin was the one talking to him and he's like, what did you do? I says, well, I, I'm not going to lie. I've been working out all weekend. He's like, are you out of your, he literally said, are you out of your mind? I says, well, I have this thing where I heal myself and then I work out. It's not always working out with weights. It's, it's incorporating swimming, jacuzzi, sauna, stretching all these things that I've done over the years to help heal myself. And he, he said, can I do some studies on you right now or check out all these different things? And I said, of course you can. After he did it, he says, I'm going to be honest with you. What you just did over the weekend, whatever it was, four days, usually a guy your age would take four weeks to heal how you did that. He's like, can you tell me, I want to sit with you for like an hour and go through everything that you did. And I also want to hear about your tactics on how you heal yourself and all this crazy stuff and how I eat two Flintstones vitamins. And I told him these things. And the only reason I'm doing this podcast, and I'm going to get into this right now, is I believe a lot of times when we do get hurt or, uh, you know, and, and this goes for, I don't care if I get a scratch on my hand at night or something, even if I hurt myself because I still lift weights or I, I'll have a tendon that's hurting me or a joint at the gym or something will happen, I'll pull my neck. I literally go and when I either go to sleep or I don't care if I just lay there to take a nap, all I'm thinking about is I'm healing and that is healing itself. And then eventually I do fall right into sleep. But I believe in my mind, no matter what, at least my mind knows it's healing. And I think my, for me, my body follows right in suit with it. At least that's what works for me. But the thing is, I'm not distracted. I'm, I got like ADD and everything in life in general, like all over the place. But when I get hurt, I shut it down. And I just lay there and keep thinking, you're healing, you're healing. And then I imagine that body part or that area being healed. Like almost, it's almost being healed. I can't even explain it. Like where it's coming together, it's getting smoother. 
healthier. I can do whatever I want to do. And then I start seeing myself doing these things, even if I'm hurt, but I'm fighting through them, even when I'm not awake fighting through them, if it makes sense. And then in my healing process, I just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. I don't look at myself as being weaker or being damaged or needing medicine or needing anything. All I need is my mind and to keep moving forward, I call it. So when I shut my eyes, I just keep imagining me getting stronger and stronger, even though I know I've been damaged. My ex-wife used to call me unbreakable from the Bruce Willis thing because um, I very seldom ever get sick. And I'm going to do a whole podcast on tricks that I have done over the years that have really helped me. Because after I had my tonsils out and I started using this healing process that I'm kind of explaining to you, I very seldom ever got sick again. Uh, Just in the last 20 years, I think in 1999, after being in a hospital with my daughter after a liver transplant for two months, I got sick. Uh, I also lost 40 pounds, but I was bouncing between two hospitals. I was having a baby in one, having another one, having a liver transplant. I got sick in 99. I think one of the reasons, like I just told you, it was January in Chicago, and I just got wore out. And then I got sick in 2003 at a film festival I got accepted in in South Beach, I don't know what happened there. I was driving home and I told my buddy, hey, my body's just shutting down. I have no idea why. I could just tell when it's shutting down, it shuts down, it shuts down. But I'll tell you in the last 30 years, you can, it's, it's a few. And I don't know how to explain that. But again, if I do start feeling like I'm getting sick, I'll touch on that a little bit here. If it's a sore throat, even if it's a headache, I immediately start thinking about healing that immediately. And I just went through that. I had a flight to Jersey last year in the middle of a huge blizzard. And I'm on all these planes. So usually I'm on literally sometimes I could be on 12, 16 different flights in a week. I hit 500 cities, I think, in like two years. So I'm in a different airplane all the time, airports. I'm in a different hotel constantly, different rental cars on the steering wheel touching that. Um, I... I don't know if I'm, I've built my tolerance to be that strong, which I, I, again, I think mentally, I'm always thinking I'm building up my tolerance. I'm not getting sick. It's kind of a reverse of what I think other people think, thinking, oh my God, if I'm around somebody sick, I'm going to get sick. I'm actually quite the opposite. I'm thinking I'm healthy. They're sick. I'm going to make them healthy. I, I don't think in sickness terms. Now, that doesn't mean I can't, I'm not going to have a heart attack and die tomorrow, or I may get an illness or a disease, but I'm always thinking in health. And I tell my mother that all the time. She's like, oh, you're going to get sick. I'm like, actually, no, I'm going to get healthier if that happens. This is going to make you sick. No, it's not. It's going to make me this. And I think a lot of people have been programmed that if they don't do this or if this happens or that happens, you're going to get sick. The truth is, I think most of it's in our head. We don't, everybody's a different human being. Everybody has different genetics. Everybody has a different immune system. And I really learned that with my daughter. My oldest daughter had a liver transplant. And they're always like, her immune system can't handle this, this, this. And back to me, what my, the way I program myself was, no, I'm going to put her in every situation so she builds up a tolerance because they were like, you can't take her to a daycare hypothetically because there's too many kids sick there. But at the same time, we don't want her to be introverted, so you got to do this. And you can't take her because then we moved to Orlando, Florida. You can't take her to the parks because there's so many germs there and you can't take her to... Uh, wet and wild, blizzard beach, or all these different pools because, you know, there's all these different things in the water and all this and that. You can't take them to the mall because they're touching this. And you, I said, bullshit. I'm taking her everywhere. And I'm not going to lie, for the first couple of years, she was getting sick. Not sick to the point where I'm saying, but she'd catch a cold and this and that. But eventually, she was able to do anything. She went on to play four sports a year, sometimes two or three even a year. Now, how would a kid who had a liver transplant have all those issues? I really believe... She built a tolerance, or I helped her and her mother and even her sister build a tolerance and an immune system that was tough. Because I think a lot of times we, now we're always washing our hands or we got to do this or that, which is one, we all have to do that. But also we have to build an immune system that is strong and powerful. And don't let anybody tell you that this or that's going to make you get, if you go out and do this, it's going to get you sick. If you don't wear a hat, it's going to get you sick or this or that. I'll tell you this, I do whatever I want and I don't get sick because I don't allow my mind to allow me or I don't let my mind acknowledge being sick, if that makes sense. And here's one thing I'm going to say regarding um, me, I believe, also helping me never get sick. I'm going to throw this one in really quick and staying healthy and that is wearing turtlenecks or always protecting my neck. 
I think that is a huge thing um, regarding just staying healthy for me. I think a lot of times our necks are exposed. And for some reason for me, when it's exposed, I start to get, I can almost feel the sore throat coming. Or I can start to almost feel like if my nose is about to run. But the more warmth I have around, for me, my neck and chest area especially, the better I feel. I really believe I could take on anything. So um, anyways, I'm going to start wrapping up there. But if you, I know we, we, I've watched and studied thousands of hours on law of attraction and, you know, uh, where humor also can help you if you're not feeling good. And um, just, I want you to, I really want people to know I'm not here to tell anybody what to do again. And I definitely do not have all the answers. <laughs> and if you're sick, I, I really believe anything medically that can help you, you should use it. God bless you. And, um, but a lot of people, I think, don't realize the power they have internally to heal themselves um, from maybe even small things. And that can also be feeling down in the dumps or all these different things. Just And not thinking it's just going to happen in a few minutes. Like I think a lot of times we'll just sit there and lay down or put our head back and go man, I feel like shit, man. I just, I wish I could feel better. I want to feel better. And then a few minutes later, you're like, ah, I still feel the same. No, you have to keep, you know, you have to keep moving forward and saying, I am getting healthier every second, every minute. And I once, I once met this uh, monk from Greece. Um, My uncle's the uh, president of the Greek council in, I think it's Chicago, the entire Midwest, and they have a monk from Greece. He's a very well-known, I think famous monk I met and stuff. And then he kept seeing me close my eyes. And he thought, I think he thought I was praying all the time, which I wasn't necessarily. But when I talk a lot of times, I close my eyes. And I, I realized after he told my mother and my aunt and everybody, he's, you know, he's in really tune, I think, with my body and my soul or mind. But I usually do close my eyes a lot of times, I realize, because I want to calm myself. And then a lot of times if negativity or things come into my mind that start to aggravate me, I want to shut that down. I mean, of course, we have to all address those things, but I don't want it to deteriorate my mind or uh, my day. And I have sometimes I do get very frustrated and I can be very, um, I guess you could say, angry at times. So what I'm thinking is, again, trying to heal myself from that anger or some misery or something that's pissing me off because I have to realize a lot of things I don't have control over. And that's also another form, I believe, of healing yourself. It's, it's not letting others kind of make you nuts. And I think a lot of times people do get sick because of obviously the stress that's in their life. So another thing, again, I try to do when I'm seeing a lot of stress come my way or I'm getting involved with a lot of stress is sitting back and saying, Rich, you have to heal yourself. Like quit allowing all these things to kind of take a toll on you emotionally, very similar to physically. And very similar, like physically, you're getting, if you get hit, you're getting damaged. If you get hit in the face or you get hit in the arm or whatever it is, it hurts, <laughs> obviously. But I don't think a lot of people realize emotionally and even mentally you're getting hit all the time. And how many beatings can you take before you break? So I'm not sure, I'm not a doctor, but I, you know, you hear the, all these different things, how stress leads to this, stress leads to that. I really believe that. So not only try to heal yourself internally when it comes to physical things, I always like to tell people, try to do it with you know your mind and really trying to get these, uh, just get your mind straight and protect yourself. So, all right, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thanks for checking out the Rich Delenza Show. I hope I didn't bore you with this one. Uh, WTF are you talking about? But uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Facebook, also, I have, uh, what else do I got going? I got the a Mastering Self-Confidence program out. Uh, it's to help men find the woman or women of their dreams, even if they've been through a bad breakup or divorce. So you could check that out as well. Uh, I put up a lot of YouTube videos as well on many different things, uh, including fitness, hygiene, how to travel affordably, because I really just want to help people as much as I can. All right, take care, and I wish you nothing but the best.